So let's talk about what you might do as a mechanical engineer, or as an electrical engineer, or as a computer software engineer in the system integration and testing arena for aerospace. The development process in aerospace takes eight major steps, uh, which in the system integration and testing realm um, require many different disciplines of engineering. System requirements and architecture design, design of test rigs and test consoles, test data and analysis, the te technical requirements, testing and certification, each of these categories you can see require specific engineering skills. Let's talk just briefly as the next slide comes up about what kind of preparation or understanding would be helpful to you in your career if you were to choose system integration and testing for aerospace. Systems engineering is a very important part of this because the test system ends up being a complete uh, self-contained system that requires the knowledge of control engineering as well as some of the disciplines like requirements management, verification, and validation. Other disciplines that are very important to this would be electrical and electronics engineering uh, in design and instrumentation, software engineers for the software that controls the tests, as well as mechanical engineering, understanding hydraulic and mechanical systems, strength of materials, having some of the tools like CAD and CAM, and having a practical knowledge of how to build circuits and breadboards for testing. Now all of these are important parts of your education as an engineer uh, in system integration and testing. However, we don't expect you as a young engineer to come prepared with all of that. Many of the things we just discussed will be acquired skills. They'll be learning and growth during your career in an aerospace company. We're going to be going through a couple of slides rather quickly now that talk about the specific opportunities that you might find in different domains uh, as an electronics engineer perhaps or a mechanical engineer in the aerospace testing and system integration realm. For electronics, there'll be opportunities for design and development of test equipment. Uh, things that are in, important to uh, understand in that test equipment design would be hydraulic actuators, electromechanical actuators, pumps, hydraulic motors, electrical motors, electronic controls, the uh, circuit boards and the controllers that they go into, all important to be able to design the optimum system to control a test system. The design and development of test interfaces, uh, instrumentation and data acquisition is a whole other field using very various platforms and uh, languages. Those are things you can get experience with in a lab perhaps in a university. Some of the communication data buses, RS-232 are familiar to many of you, but RS-422, 485, and then the Ethernet, CAT5 and CAT6 protocols. All important, but you don't have to come knowing all of this. A good knowledge of the fundamentals is your best bet. Avionics data buses, which you probably don't see in the university, A rank 429 and several other A ranks. protocols as well as MIL standard 1553 are uh, data bus protocols that we use often in aerospace. And then for electronics, there are many tools uh, that are used for electronics design, uh, including, including Allegro and um, several other products. Let's talk about software. In software for the aerospace business, there are two different domains. One is the embedded software that actually is 
designed for the flight control computer. The other is the software for the test equipment, for the test system. We'll be talking about the second type of software today. This is the type that's designed specifically for conducting tests of um, the electronics and the uh, mechanical hardware as a system. For software, there are opportunities in designing automated test equipment software, uh, LabVIEW, and, uh, and, and also um, languages like Python use in the process. However, exposure to one or, or two of those is sufficient. You don't need to come with the knowledge of all of those. In fact, if you were to prepare yourself simply with a good solid knowledge of how to use MATLAB and Simulink for modeling, that would be a great place to prepare. Again, for software, understanding the different data protocols like A rank 429 or MIL 1553, the uh, commercial uh, protocols like uh, RS-232, those would all be helpful. You have to know all of them. If you understand system and software integration, that will be a real help. And that's something you perhaps explore in the lab at the university. Ultimately, we'll help you get a good understanding of acceptance testing, functional testing, qualification testing, and what those life cycles are about, and what the control systems need to look like for those uh, applications. Ultimately, again, though, two types of software in aerospace. The type we're talking about today is for test equipment and test systems. Uh, there's another type of software, embedded software for the flight control computers, which Moog also designs, as, as do other uh, aerospace companies. And we'll be talking about the software uh, in our Tech Gig session next week. The next slide that comes up for you, I'm hoping you'll see it about now, is uh, mechanical. For mechanical, uh, the opportunities are uh, primarily around the, the actual test fixtures that uh, are used to uh, put the components through the most rigorous of tests. Uh, and a mechanical engineer might be called to design and develop a large test fixture for a, a geared actuator or a hydraulic cylinder or a system of multiple LRUs, which is line replaceable unit. Um, many different disciplines go into that that are all mechanical engineering related, design and drafting of the test rigs and the assembly tools. Uh, also designing the fixtures uh, that are used uh, to um, manufacture the parts. Uh, modeling and drafting of a vibration fixture or a a special test fixture for production, all could happen uh, under the guidance of a mechanical engineer. There's also a, a great opportunity to work hands-on with these test uh, rigs and the um, technology that we're testing in them to work on the integration of the actual test unit that will go on an aircraft eventually uh, with the test um, equipment. We'll be going to an, another slide now, and I think there may be a little bit of a delay. Uh, but the next slide is talking about integration. And I'll just talk a little bit about integration, S the system integration and test domain is uh, a unique, in a unique position in the aerospace industry because it involves designing and developing and integrating an entire system. Uh, in many ways, the system integration and test domain is doing a smaller version of what the aircraft manufacturer does in creating a control system uh, that acts in many ways like the control system on the aircraft. You should be seeing a picture now that uh, has the title System Integration Opportunities. 
And in this domain, the, uh, the, the primary emphasis is on understanding the requirements of the system and then making sure when all is said and done that the requirements have been met. And that requires some very sophisticated engineering, in fact. Understanding the requirements up front to making sure the requirements are realistic takes good engineering judgment, which is often developed over many years. Uh, learning to tune a control system, the spring mass damp, uh, damping uh, systems that are present in any mechanical test system, takes uh, some good basis in the knowledge of control theory and also some on-the-job experience. But when it's all said and done, the engineer who's responsible for system integration also is required to be able to, to document the fact that all the requirements were met so that there aren't any surprise requirements that would actually cause danger on the aircraft.